James Swanick here from Swanick. Great to see you here. And we're joined today by Emma Smith, who is a registered nurse in Australia and the co-founder of uh, a great group and community named The Other Shift, which helps shift workers with their sleep and with their energy and with their clarity and with their focus. Emma, it's great to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having us. I'm so excited. Tell us, uh, well, actually, before you tell us about The Other Shift, mm-hmm. if you're watching now, now and you're joining on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment and tell us where you are watching from. And if you have a question about night shift work or about sleep, or whether you should nap or uh, during the day or, or when's the best time to sleep and how do you how do you uh, relax and repair when you're doing night shifts all the time, then go ahead and post a, a comment or post a question and I will uh, and Emma and I will do our best to, to answer that. So just tell us a little bit about the the other shift, Emma. Yeah, so um, I've been nursing for 10 years and I specialised in emergency nursing uh, sort of after about four years in, into my nursing career. So I've been learning about emergency medicine and you see lots of things as a nurse. People, you know, you go on your break at 9 o'clock in the morning and someone will buy some hot chips because they've just come off night shift and that's what they have for breakfast. So then they're sluggish all day and then they complain that they can't sleep. So you see that sort of extreme and then you see people that are, meal planning and they're so diligent, they're organised and they've got this amazing sleep routine set up. So you're seeing sort of both uh, ends of the spectrum. Um, So it's interesting, um, for the last two years we've been living in America, my husband and I, and it's we've watched a lot of NBA and we've been able to uh, experience a wonderful life over in America. And it's talking to friends back at home, it's given me, um, you know, to learn about, what's hearing about things, what's happening uh, back in Melbourne, back in my workplace and thinking back to the the struggles and I guess uh, the routine of what people have um, had back uh, in my, when they were nursing, it's, um, it's given me a bit of a different perspective on that some people some people do the shift work thing really well and some people don't. So as I've had a bit of time in America and why I've been waiting for visa paperwork and things to come back, it's uh, I thought what can I do to help? What can I do to help these people and these night shift workers sort of um, live a healthier lifestyle? And so one day where I just had an epiphany when I was in America and thought I can start a website. I didn't know a thing about website development. I didn't know a thing about this um this sort of world. I'm a nurse. I don't. I don't do tech stuff. But I thought, okay, I can do this. So, uh, yeah. So we started this website, and it's a blog-based website. But we answer individual questions, and um, we help in any way we can. So we help people who work night shift, who work a rotating roster, maybe people who work day shift or swing shift, or whatever. All the non-traditional shifts um, is where we we like to help people with. So. Um, I like to get a range of different people. So I know healthcare and I know nursing, but I don't know other things. Dan, uh, my husband, he did a bit of uh, night shift there for for two years or so. So and he was in an office job, so we got a bit of a different perspective on um, on shift work. So yeah, it's it's really exciting what we what we do, and I like that I can. Um, I'm still a nurse now. I'm just about to go to a a shift when we're finished here so it's good that I can get some real life experience and put it into a blog and it's not all no it's not made up it's real life experience that I can actually give people so it's a genuine genuine thing and I'm really excited Mm. what's uh what's a typical shift that you might work as a as a registered nurse anything uh, so our, generally in our emergency department, it's broken down into three main shifts. So there's a 7 till 3.30 and then there's an afternoon shift that's from um, 1.30 to 10-ish and then there's a night shift that uh, runs from about 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9.30 till 7 in the morning. And then there's a couple of random shifts in between. So there might be a 5 o'clock start that finishes at 1 o'clock just to cover sort of meal breaks and things. But generally it's broken up into those three shifts. 
So 7 a.m. until 3.30 in the afternoon, 1.30 yep. p.m. until 10 at night, and 9 mm-hmm. p.m. until 7 a.m. And mm-hmm. the way that they schedule you, can it be the same time slot for many weeks or days at a time, or does it change all change. the time? Give us an example. Change. Yeah, it changes. So I might work three day shifts in a row. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday could be day shift. And then they'll on the Thursday, they'll put me on an afternoon and then I might have four days off. And then after my four days off, I might do three night shifts. Mm-hmm. And then I might have one day off and then I'll go back onto a PM. So it's totally random. Um, some nurses really like to work night shift and they just want to do that constantly. But um, my boss likes everyone to understand what has, happens in every shift. So, look, they may do 60% nights, but then um, my boss will say, no, no, you need to see what happens in the daytime. So they'll put them on a day shift and they hate it. <laughs> We've got a couple of questions here. So I'll assume that everyone can hear you. So uh, Sarah on Facebook says, is Emma wearing Swanick glasses too? Sure am. Sure am. I l- I love these ones because they don't get caught in my hair. <laughs> if I put them on my head, they don't get caught in my hair. <laughs> I wear these. I, I don't know what I did before without looking at a computer or looking at my device. I constantly wear these. I think I, I'm wearing swan wicks more than when I'm not wearing them. So I flick between these ones and my night swannies. Anytime I'm at home pretty much just before I'm going to go to sleep yeah. after a shift. I switch to the ones that you're wearing. I think we've lost your sound, Emma. I uh, I thought it may have been me at one at, at one point, but um, I don't think others can hear you at the moment as well, as what I'm being told. Can you hear me so, now? So uh, let's have Is that a look better here. Or not? Oh, no. Well, so actually, Melanie says that we're fine, actually. So if you're watching live, apologies for this delay, but uh, I I just can't hear you. But that's okay. I'm being told what you're saying, and I know it's wonderful. (laughs) Can you you hear me now? I'm glad that you can hear me from now, Emma. Um, Yeah, I can hear you. So I'm curious, like you were saying, like 7 to 3.30, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 1.30 to 10 on Tuesday, 9 to 7, that has to be disruptive for your sleep yep. patterns and for your circadian rhythm, like being all over the place like that. Just tell mm-hmm. us uh, how taxing that can be on the on the body. Really taxing. It's, it's unfortunate that we haven't evolved into shift work warriors and despite how long shift work jobs have been around, it's really unfortunate for us that, um, that our body clock hasn't allowed us to, you know, it's fine to be, asleep during um during the day and to be awake at night it's unfortunate that hasn't happened for us but it can be really taxing and it can be incredibly frustrating that you can't you know you can't fall asleep after you've been working for a 12-hour night shift and you get home and you can't sleep it can be incredibly frustrating when you uh, work those shifts. How taxing is it on relationships as well? Because I would imagine that uh, having your husband Dan working on a, it sounds like a more stable um, shift. How does that affect? How does that affect the, the the dynamic of a relationship? Yeah, yeah. You really learn to communicate, and you learn to find a new normal particularly in an intimate relationship. So with my husband, we uh, we have to find ways that we can connect and be comfortable, you know, talking like this or, um, you, you know, using different devices to be able to communicate. Um, but it's, it's funny from a um, nursing perspective for the guys that are, that are watching. Um, Connie, I can see you on YouTube. Um, it's, it's interesting that you start to make friends with other shift workers. And particularly in the nursing world, you start to make make friends with people who understand your schedule. But, you know, you lose a few friends. And I know that when I started working shift work, you you do lose a few because they just don't understand your schedule. But um, you, you have to become comfortable with catching up with people at really um, at odd times. So you may have breakfast dates or you may catch up with people and have dinner at 4.30 because that's just what works for someone with kids. So you learn to um, 
to find a new normal. But it isn't impossible and it's, you know, in a very happy marriage and it's proven that, um, you know, you can do it. It just looks a bit different. Emma, I'm watching you and I'm reading your lips, but I still can't hear you. But I've been told reliably that other people can, both (laughs) on YouTube and Facebook. So I'm just going to ask some questions as I see them come in. I'm not going to be able to hear your answers at the moment, but and I, I'm not even going to try to pretend to people watching on Facebook and YouTube that I understand what, what you're saying. But Can I change uh, my headphones? Let me just ask some of the questions here and you okay. will get to um, to share. So we have uh, – let's have a look here. I'll look at some of the questions. So we have someone on Facebook um, who's saying, I'm a telephone exchange operator at a hotel. I work at night. Um so what if someone is going all the way through, um, say, starting at nighttime and going through until 6 a.m.? Let's say it's a 10 p.m. until um, 6 a.m. shift, or you mentioned they're a 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. shift. Mm-hmm. Um, what should they do to prepare for that sleep, and when should they actually be going to sleep, and how should they sleep Um you know, after they finish their shift at 7 a.m. in order that they're back and fresh and, and their body's mm-hmm. working the way their body's supposed to be working. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so just talk talk us through best practices for that shift. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of things. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I don't know your name, whoever asked that, but thank you for the question. Um, there's a lot of things that come into organising yourself for that shift. So, it, so firstly, I'd ask how many night shifts you're on at one go. So if, you, if this is just a one-off shift, the preparation may look different to if you're working sort of four night shifts in a row. So let's say for this example that you are working four night shifts in a row. So there's a few, if, if I was in the same situation as you, we start at sort of similar times. So you could, um, in terms of sleep preparation, you could for the first couple of days before you start night shift, you can start going to bed a little bit later. So if a normal um, time that you'd go to sleep is 9 o'clock at night, you may stretch that out for two hours, go to sleep at 11 o'clock, and then you progressively, um, for the couple of days leading up, you start to progressively move your sleep from 11 and then you might go to sleep at 1 o'clock and then you might go to sleep at 2 o'clock to progressively look like a night shift worker before you even start. So then when you do start your shift, it's not such a big shock and your body isn't um, sort of, I guess I call it, going into meltdown and by 6 o'clock you can't even get in your car to drive home. So that's one method. The other method, um, so I don't don't usually do that because I'm on a rotating roster and I'm generally working night shift, uh, sorry, afternoon or day shift the night before. Um, so how I do it is I have, like, let's say I was um, starting your shift on a um, Monday morning. On the Sunday night, um, I go to bed at normal time, but then like to have a big sleep in. I then like to do all my housework. I do a bit of meal prep and work out in the afternoon. And then I get to about... 4.30, sort of 5 o'clock in the afternoon and I have a really big nap, have a nice nutritious dinner before I go to a shift and then um, I would start work. So there's a couple of different ways that you can um, organise this, uh, you know, organise this night shift routine. Um, you just have to find out what works for you. Um, so, um, James, I think you are saying that during the shift sort of what you – can do so if you could just remind me um but during the shift I guess what you can do to uh, get yourself to be able to sleep and I guess um approach your next shift with a lot of energy is to from a meal perspective is before you leave for a shift make sure you're having a big nutritious um meal it's full of veggies I like to think of it as many veggies and color as I can in a meal some protein some healthy fats um Eat that before you leave for a shift. And then throughout the shift, your digestive system slows. It basically goes to sleep. As I was saying, our body clock is all dependent on the light. So when it when the sun goes down, our digestive system, it effectively goes to sleep and doesn't really want us to eat anything. So eating um, 
small little snacks throughout the night is much better than having a second dinner as it was always referred to me when I started nursing at, you know, 2 o'clock at night. It's much better to have um, maybe some hummus with some carrot and some celery dipped in or a handful of almonds, some soup because it's super hydrating um, is a much better thing to have between the hours of midnight and 6 o'clock. Um, so if you do get hungry, I'd recommend eating those sort of foods. And then just before you're going to go to sleep when you get home, I recommend having a small breakfast. A lot of people aren't hungry at this point and just go to sleep. Um, but the problem with this is you wake up at about midday and you're so hungry. So then you go and eat, you open all the blinds, you're exposing your eyes to um, you're waking up that melatonin. And if you do try to go back to sleep after you've eaten this meal, it can be really, really difficult. So I'm a big advocate for having a tiny breakfast, even if that's just a cup of hot milk. I totally recommend doing this um, before you go to sleep. Emma, I have a question here from, uh, from someone watching on Facebook who asks, uh, for weight loss, should you – uh, eat directly after a shift. If you're if you're finishing work at seven a.m. in the morning, say, should you be eating then, or when is the best time to eat? Uh, if you're looking for weight loss, but because everyone you still have to eat, right? But like, when is the right time to do it compared to when you go to sleep, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he can't hear, but I did sort of touch on this. Um, I did sort of touch on this earlier. Um, M for weight loss. Does that after six rule? Um, not eating after six pm. Um, well, I suppose it depends um, what shift what you're on shift and sort of what you're route. Route. Whoa. Uh, Yeah, it depends sort of what sh shift you're on. But I think the important thing is is just to have something small um, before you're going to go to sleep. Yeah, so just, I'll, I'll just keep going just about the food thing. What I thought was so interesting um, when I first started working nights, can you hear me, James? Yeah, I can. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, now I can finally hear you. That was, like, <laughs> challenging. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that your what you were saying was genius, everything about it. I didn't hear one word that you said for the past 10 minutes, but I know it was amazing, <laughs> but now I can hear you just perfectly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you for... Thank you for uh, your patience with that, and thank That's you for right. everyone who's watching on Facebook and YouTube as well. I was I was a little bit, a little bit uh, without sound. There. <laughs> Carry on, please, Emma. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just I, in the previous question. I talked about food a little bit. So, James, I was just saying that our digestive system between when the sun's down uh, and when it's dark outside, our digestive system basically goes to sleep and it has a little rest. So the more that we eat during that period of time can cause bloating. We, we tend to, we get really tired during those hours, so we tend to eat foods that are, well, we're drawn to foods that are high in carbohydrates. The pizza smells really good. The burger down the road smells really good, and that's what we want to eat because that's where we get our energy from. But we may get energy for the first, you know, maybe half an hour. You feel really good. But then after that, you, you just fall into a massive hole. So I find the biggest in terms of your weight loss question that people generally put on weight on night shift because we, one, we overeat. Two, we eat too fast because we may not get a break or we get a really short break because it could be busy. So we eat as much food as we can. We overeat, but our digestive system is asleep. So it can cause a lot of bloating. Um, we're drawn to foods that are really high in sugar again for that energy hit. So as an alternative, eating foods, you know, like the hummus with the veggies or the soups that have got lots of veggies in it that are super hydrating um, or, you know, a couple of almonds is a much better choice than, you know, maybe a packet of lollies. We're talking uh, so about Smith from... The other shift, if you've got a question on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and post your comment or your question down below. Rod from on Facebook says, shout out to Emma and all the frontliers during this time. Thanks, yeah, Rod. Yeah, big shout out to you, Emma. Um, it must feel nice to get people acknowledging you. I'm sure you always have people acknowledging you, but maybe especially so during this time. Is that, is that yeah, correct or feels, not? Yeah, it feels odd. 
it, it's really nice. It's really lovely and it's very humbling to see, um, you know, nurses on the front page of Vogue, for example, last week. Like I just think that's that's really it's really cool. It's very humbling. We, yeah. we go to work, we go to work uh, not for this, so. You can learn more about Emma at theothershift.com if you go to theothershift.com and you can learn more about uh, Emma and circadian rhythms and night shift and day shift working. Um, what has been the biggest leverage point for you, do you feel, in improving your sleep quality as, a, as someone who works shifts? Like what, what's like the biggest thing? I know there are a number of things, but like if you have, had to say like if you could only do one thing, to improve your sleep, your sleep quality, to improve your quality of life as a shift worker, what what would that one thing be? Emma? Well, I'm sort of going to make it two. I know I'm not answering the question, but two things for a shift worker. Okay. One, you have to prioritize it. Um, prioritize it and be positive that you can do it. Everyone will say, oh, no, I can't do that. I couldn't work night shift. I couldn't do this. And in your mind, you already think, I can't do it because everyone tells you they can't. It is possible to do it, but you have to do things like light, protecting yourself from the light. So I think that's probably one of my main takeaways that and how I've improved my sleep and how I have enough energy to keep doing what I'm doing is that being really aware of the light at particular shifts. For example, if I come home from night shift, I immediately now, I immediately close all the curtains and I put on my um, swannies, the same the night one is what you're wearing. I put them on mm. immediately um, as I'm having a small breakfast, as I'm brushing my teeth, as I'm getting ready for bed. I'm very, very cautious of putting these on. Whereas in the past, I ne- never knew Swannies even existed. So you might, you know, you make breakfast, you put the t- you put the tally on, and you wind down after a shift, which is natural. And even nine to five workers, everyone needs to wind down after a shift. So that could look like scrolling on your phone, looking at Instagram, looking at the TV, whatever. Um, But I just think being really aware of the light in that preparation time. But then importantly, if you need to get up and maybe use the bathroom or you get hungry at midday to continue to close the curtains and don't turn the lights on. It seems really unnatural that you wake up and you stumbling around the house trying to not look into walls, but I think that bit's really important, that if you do wake up in the middle of the day to keep everything really dark. Um, And alternatively, if you are on a shift, it may be really tempting to turn the lights off because it's night shift. You might be working, I'm using a nursing example, but even if as a security guard, Um, to turn all the lights off where you are, but this is what your body wants. Your body wants to be in darkness, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning. This is what your body naturally wants. So as a night shift worker, you have to keep the lights on. You've got to tell you, you've got to prevent your hormones like melatonin from actually doing its job. So I think the light and being aware of that is probably my biggest takeaway. Hmm. Uh, Vanny Sharkey on Facebook asks, doesn't the orange tint in the Swanee's glasses affect the way you see things? Yeah, it does. And you have to get used to seeing um, people on TV with a tan. <laughs> it, is, it is a little bit weird and I guess when I first started wearing them, they it's more orange than what I was expecting. Um, but it's it's funny, Vanny, after a little while you don't even really notice it. Like after you've been wearing it for even an hour, I, I don't even notice it. So There we go. Here we go. There you go. There See, we go. got a nice tan. <laughs> it's just like putting an Instagram filter yeah, in real life. That. I have a my tan is even better than President Donald Trump's tan at the moment. That's it. Look at that. I'm rocking. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I always, um, I mean, it's one of those things you just get used to. It might seem a little jarring at first. You're like, whoa. But then after about five minutes, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, in fact, I find it more jarring. I mean, I I, um, I watch a little bit of TV before I go to sleep each night. I, I like, the, I think Netflix gets a bad rap because everyone's like, ah, oh, you shouldn't be watching Netflix before you go to sleep. Well, I say, watch Netflix before you go to sleep, but as long as you're wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses like the Swannies. So I, um, at the moment, I'm watching a TV series called um, Ozark and oh, yeah. uh, 
on Netflix, the TV series. And, um, you know, I watch probably about, uh, it ranges from a half an episode to two thirds of an episode each night. And then the next night I'll finish the second half of the episode or I'll finish the last third. So I'm probably watching either 30 or 40 minutes of an episode at night. Uh, I like it to watch it just to, just to wind down. I absolutely am wearing my Swanee's blue light blocking glasses as I'm doing so. On those rare occasions where I've taken the glasses off while watching the show for whatever reason, I can't think of why. Sometimes I just go to like test it. It's super jarring to watch the actual sh- mm. show on the screen without the glasses. Mm. Like when I wear the glasses, I'm like, oh, everything is like relaxing. Yeah, I, can I watch find it that too. Fine. I put them on and I just, oh, I'm instantly relaxed. I, it's instant for me. The I didn't necessarily get headaches before and I don't wear prescription glasses, but it's just an instant calm, particularly after a night or particularly when you've had a big shift. Yeah. I just, it's, it's incredibly relaxing on my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I find it jarring to look at a screen now without them. I mean, look, I, strictly speaking, I don't need to be wearing these right now because it's the daytime at 7.30 in the morning where we are in Australia. So I might put my daytime uh, glasses on, which are up on my bookshelf behind me. Um, but having said that, since, uh, now I'm wearing them in the daytime. I'm blocking that artificial blue light. I'm just, you know, it's it's fine. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I, you, you look great. I think I look pretty good when everything's fine. It's not like a weird, it's not a weird look. It's not, it's just, just how it looks. Mm. Um, so I hope that helps, Vanny. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, we have a question here from uh, Ja on Facebook who asks, what are some tips for insomniacs to have a better sleep? So thanks, Ja. Um, so beside the light, big light thing I was talking about before, as a if you are an insomniac, I'm sure you've tried many, many things in the past, so I don't mean to insult you saying the following things. Um, but there's a... a couple of things if you are a shift worker and you are an insomniac is to first find a routine for yourself. So I'll, I'll tell you what a potential routine could be for you is when you, if you are working a night shift or whatever, it doesn't really matter if you're day or night, but when you come in um, from the house, put on your swannies or just jump in straight in the shower. I want to get these scrubs off as soon as possible. So I just jump straight in the shower, nice warm shower, um, have um, have some breakfast, maybe watch a little bit of TV, however, or however you want to wind down, if that's reading a book or um, that's scrolling your phone, watching Netflix, whatever you want to do. And then, um, you know, set a time limit for yourself. So don't put on a full-length movie when, you know, you don't have time for it. So to start prioritising sleep a little bit and stick to the same routine every time. So consistency I think is what has allowed me to get seven to nine hours sleep consistently even as a shift worker obviously some shifts just don't allow for seven to nine hours but I think having a routine is um, one thing Um, another thing that you could use is trying a diffuser so using sort of lavender oil or essential oils through a diffuser in your bedroom Um, I found recently I've been using the Headspace app, which have got some really good sort of mindfulness meditation stuff before you go to sleep. So you could put headphones in or even put it on speaker at your bedside table. Some of them are super short, like even two minutes, three minutes might be all you need just to distract your mind from the shift you've had. So there's heaps of audio things that you can use. So there's adult storybooks. meditation or just meditative music um you can use white noise machines you can actually get buy a white noise machine or i've recently just been using um my swan wick diffuser actually turn the light off and just have the diffuser going and the noise is almost like a white noise for me and it just just it's not silent Shift workers sometimes complain about the silence that it's just too quiet, particularly if you've got blackout blinds or, you know, you've made a bedroom for yourself in the basement because you've got kids and the house is just too um, noisy. So you may actually need some noise, which sounds ridiculous, but, um, yeah, that could help. 
Um, other things that I use is just drinking a little bit of hot milk before I go to sleep. I don't know if that just brings back nice childhood memories of having warm milk, but that seems to work for me. Um, avoiding caffeine five to six hours before your shift ends. So that's obviously going to look different for everyone, but don't have a coffee on your way home. I know the amount of times that I've, this is shameful to say, but I've got in my car and I don't remember how I've got home because I've been so tired. It's so tempting to drive past McDonald's or get a dollar um, coffee from 7-Eleven, but really avoid doing that on the way home. If you are super tired, just pull over and have a nap. Um, set your alarm for 10 minutes and, um, yeah, I'd recommend that. Um, what else do I have? Oh, my other thing is to have um, clean sheets and a pillow that you love. Again, this sounds stupid and as an insomniac, this might sound ridiculous to say, but if you really hate your sheets, they itch you, they're too hot, you, your pillow's too flat, like your actual bedding, if you don't like it, you're going into bed every night with this negative mindset that, oh, God, I should have changed my sheets and I've forgotten and now I'm annoyed. I'm already annoyed before I get into bed. So, um, so I'd recommend if that's you, then go shopping this weekend. Um, and sort of the last thing is you, if you work a really tiresome job and you're on your feet a lot, you could get home and your feet are absolutely killing you. So this, of, this often happens to me. So I do a, you might have seen it, a little yoga pose that you put your butt right up against the wall and you elevate your feet up against the wall for a couple of minutes and just let that blood drain from your legs. And I find that when I get into bed, my legs aren't aching and sore as, you know, if I hadn't have done that. And I guess lastly from a social perspective is to you as a shift worker, you've got to still do the things that you really love and you've got to see the people and make contact with the people that make you happy because if you don't want to go to bed guilty and think that you, you know, you might not have seen anyone by your work colleagues in, you know, two weeks. So in your downtime, in your commute to work, like call someone make contact with the outside world or people that are not shift workers or just someone that makes you laugh, someone that makes you happy. I think that can be, um, it can take away the stress and sort of normalise your job. We're talking to Emma Smith from The Other Shift and you can find Emma and The Other Shift on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Other Shift or if you just type in The Other Shift on Facebook and you can also go to theothershift.com. Uh, Emma was just mentioning the Swanick diffuser. Uh, we put a link up uh, down below and you can have a look in the comments there as well where you can check out that diffuser, uh, which is a great way to uh, run some aromatherapy and to uh, relax at the end uh, the end of the day. Um, I remember I interviewed someone once when I was a journalist back in the day and they said uh, the two most important things that someone should buy are shoes and and uh, a bed, because if you're not in one, then you're in the other. <laughs> I thought that was quite that. that was quite clever. Yeah. So, in, in terms of a bed, do you do you how do you set up your bed at home for optimal optimal sleep? Well, I I spent a bit of money on a pillow previously before shift work. I didn't really care about what pillow I slept, but I I saved a bit of money and I bought one. Oh, I think it was about a hundred bucks. But from in the world of pillows, you know that's a pretty pricey pillow where you can get one from Kmart for twenty dollars. So, and I absolutely love it, and I am instantly feel rested when I go to sleep. So, good pillow, good sheets. I recently bought a linen um, quilt, like linen doona cover, and I find that really nice. It's not itchy on my neck. Um, we changed the curtains in our bedroom to be more a blackout curtain. Um, I took away a lot of the things in my bedroom that created noise in my head. So we had like we had we were moving house so it was difficult to sleep but we had um, a lot of boxes and storage and maybe like a clothes that needed to be put away or just like things in my room that created noise. I just cleared it all away. So it's in there it's just bedside table, my bed and a wardrobe. Like I haven't got other things around and I find that that's, it's peaceful for my brain. Mm. Um, uh, this isn't really relevant to me, but my sister's also a shift worker and she painted her room red. And for a good six months, she had red walls 
and she found that she wasn't really sleeping. So she painted it all white and she instantly felt more relaxed, particularly after a shift. So uh, that I haven't actually tried that personally myself, but if you do have like lots of things on your walls and maybe bright, you know, red or green or whatever the colour in your bedroom is and you're not sleeping, like consider painting your walls just an, like a natural colour and you might you might find that it's a little bit more relaxing. Um, I've also mm. got, I also use a book light in bed that's an amber colour book light and it's got some different settings. So if I do want to read my book um in bed, I use that rather than the big light with my Swannies, and I find that that's a really that's a perfect um, light sort of setup for me. Um, what else have I got? Um, I think that might be it. Yeah, and for anyone curious, what the view looks like through a pair of uh, daytime Swannies, I'll put these up to the uh, to the to the uh, to the camera right now. Let's have a look. Here we go. There we go. So when are you wearing your daytime swannies and when are you wearing your orange lensed swannies, Emma? Uh, when I get home from a night shift, I'll put them on the minute I walk in the door. So if I get if my shift finishes at seven thirty, you know, and I get home at quarter to eight, eight o'clock, they're on instantly when I get home, yeah. and I keep them on pretty much until I sleep. So they're the night swannies. Yeah. So I'll when you get them. home from so during your shift. And you may apologies if you've already said this. Mm. Probably you may have said this when I couldn't hear you earlier. But yeah. when you're doing your night shift, when you're working during the mm. night, you're wearing daytime swannies. Is that right? Well, I haven't been in the land of COVID right now. I don't want to put extra things on the floor because we're wearing face shields right now, or, uh, constantly because it. um, it's a hot zone. So we're wearing a full face shield. Oh, yeah. So this would be. Um, inappropriate to wear because I've already got a mask on and, you know, a hair cover right. and a face shield, so it's all too much. Um, so I haven't been wearing these on the floor, but if I do have to, um, you know, check my emails or to do something on the computer, that's when I'd wear them. Um, so if I'm – I wear my day ones if I want to be awake. I want to be awake but I'm using my computer, that's when I wear these. If I'm trying to go to sleep, preparing my body for sleep, that's when I'd wear the orange lenses. Yeah. So if it. I get home maybe from a, a PM shift, the one that finishes at 10 o'clock at night, I put on the night orange swannies the minute I get home. And uh, and then what about if you're getting home at and in the morning as well? Like let's say you're in a night shift, 10 until mm -hmm. 6, uh, or sorry, 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. you said. Um, yeah. What's when are the what swannies are going on and what's your routine then from like 7 a.m. until you go to sleep? If I'm doing a morning shift, was that so? Yeah, so if you're doing a 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. shift, yep, what I routine then? a minute I get home, so if I, I at 8 a.m., I'd probably put them on until I go to sleep. Good. Yep, got it. And when are you going to sleep in those circumstances? What I time? like to sleep if I'm on a night shift and I get home at, let's say, 8 o'clock, I like to be asleep by 9. I give myself an hour to have a bit of breakfast to and to sort of start my routine I was speaking about before. That's when I shower, brush my teeth, have a bit of, um, have a little bit of breakfast, probably read five pages of my book before I fall asleep. Um, so it's in that hour. So for, for the night shift workers watching this, um, I like to give myself, yeah, about an hour from when I get in the door to when I need to um, when I need to go to sleep. It's very, very tempting as a night shift worker not to do this because if you work with nine to five workers at home, they're starting their day. You know, the TV's probably going, the music's going, they're having breakfast, like their day started, they're energetic and you just want to sleep. So it's very tempting to start doing what they're doing and your routine goes out the window. Before you know it, it's, you know, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. So um, so for night shift workers, just stick to the routine that you've set for yourself. Of course, if you've got kids, this might look a little bit different as well. But uh, if you are a parent, you drop your kids off at school and you come back, you know, and it's 9.30, then try to prioritise sleep at that point and, you know, try to be in bed, you know, within an hour because I'm sure you need a bit of respite if, you, if you've just 
um, got your kids all ready for school and you've done the breakfast thing and you've made lunches and like that can all be pretty exhausting but you know don't put it off until midday to go to sleep. And have you on those occasions where you have put it off until midday to go to sleep where yeah. you've been tempted and something's happened how yeah. what has been the result of that? It's a nightmare. When I start nights, when I start my night shift by about three o'clock in the morning, I'm so I'm absolutely exhausted, and it, you know, it can compromise patient care, and for the job that I'm in, it it can be a real um, safety risk. So it's just not worth it for me, and particularly for other other shift workers, you know, they might be in law enforcement, they might be, you know, um, using, you know, quite dangerous machinery. Like we want to be on our A game. So, and we can't really take risks in a lot of the jobs that we're in. So, you know, really having a routine is incredibly important. And how does it compromise your social life if it does? Maybe it doesn't, like, but when most people are working a nine to five or daytime shifts, you know, whatever they are, and not as many people are working nighttime shifts, how does that compromise? you know, activities you might ordinarily choose to, to take? Yeah, it does. It, it does and you can become really upset about it. Um, and I know when I first started working night shift, you can get a bit down and it, it is very easy to fall into the rut of sleeping, eating, going to work, sleeping, eating, going to work. It's very easy to sort of get caught up in that and not to see anyone. So um, I... Uh, the f- few little tips that I do is if I am doing a, a couple of night shifts, I like to organise a dinner date or s- particularly it really works well if you go out for dinner with someone who you're on the same shift with because we just go down to a, you know, a pub down near work and have a meal that, you know, we might only be there for half an hour and we might be wearing our scrubs and it's probably inappropriate to wear scrubs at a pub. But anyway, um, we go down there and we have a nice meal and we catch up and, it's, so that's a really nice way to break up your night shift and also get a bit of, um, you know, social life. But it, it can be it can be incredibly challenging and um, sometimes your friends will get um, upset with you and they think, oh, she just sleeps all the time and they don't know when to call and you just get put into the too hard basket. But I think for me it. I the ball sort of falls in my court that if I want to catch up with people then I have to sort of be in control and call them before a shift and you know really make time for people in in the uh, on your days off. Do you ever uh, do night shift workers or shift workers for that matter struggle with uh, sadness or depression at any stage? Like, is that more common or less common or the same as anyone? Um, because your body's out of whack, because it maybe you go down a rabbit hole sometimes where you're like everyone else is normal and I'm and I'm not normal because I'm doing this thing. Like how do what's the mental health like of 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 ship workers or or how are ship workers workers prone to um, their mental health being compromised? I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. Some people um, have a really hard time with it. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Some people really have a tough time adjusting to the night and they, they're they really social people and really um, have a tough time. But then you can talk to some night shift workers or people who work shift shift work and absolutely love it. They love that it's quieter roads. They love that they can go to the supermarket and not have to line up. They love that they can sort of um, live a life that's away from peak hour. Um so some some people like it, but it it can get you down if you don't get on the the front foot and you don't um, you know organize things with your friends and you don't get enough sunshine. Uh, the sun the sun can be a really big trigger for depression, I think, and to feel down. That if you just constantly live in darkness, you work in the dark and you sleep in the dark. It not getting enough vitamin D and not getting enough sun, sun exposure can really get you down. So. Um, as a routine thing for me is I like to wake up um, if I am doing night shift, for example, I wake up at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon or anywhere between sort of 3.30 and 6, depending on the day. Um, I like to get up. I have my 
gym sort of workout clothes at my door of my bedroom so I have to step over it which is I can't step over it um get changed and go outside enjoy some sunshine and walk outside it's a really nice time um in the afternoon to call someone during that time or if someone's home one of your housemates get the dog and go for a walk during that time don't put that off when I first started night shift, I, I put that off and just sort of um, convinced myself that I didn't need to do any exercise and I'd be okay from a mental health perspective. But you just, it, you're not, you're not you, ne- you need a bit of sunshine and your body needs that um, and your, your body clock needs that little reminder that, yes, you are human and the sun really is good to help you sleep and to, um, to kickstart your gut and that you can um, your digestive system can work when it when it uh, when it senses some light. Otherwise, it'll just be asleep forever, and you know you'll find that you'll be bloated, and that also doesn't help your mental health. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Emma. We're talking to Emma Smith from the Other Shift. You can check out the Other Shift on Facebook or at theothershift.com. Emma is wearing a pair of the daytime swannies at the moment, and. Uh, Proudly rocks the nighttime swannies uh, on occasion as well. Uh, we've been talking, uh, um, we've mentioned a few products here from Swanick as well. The Swanick Hypnotherapy, you can get on the site. There's a link in the comments there. There's a, a diffuser as well, which Emma also uses. There's a there's a link uh, to the Swanick diffuser there in the comments. Um, we're I on also, our way. Uh, so I also use, while you're talking about products, um, yeah. some t- when, before we changed our um curtains sort of we've got some shades set up i use the um eye mask which is absolutely gorgeous i've tried many many eye masks before some little some big with two straps some with just one strap and i find the swannies one is really really lovely to wear it doesn't itch um it's it's beautiful so if anyone is looking for an eye mask it's a little bit more expensive than ones I've tried before, and I think that's why I was hesitant originally, but it's well worth, you know, the extra money. So if people are considering it, go for it. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, I wear my uh, Swannies eye mask every single night, and uh, I, I find it challenging to, to sleep without it these days. <laughs> I've just got so used to blocking all of that light. Like a big hug on your face. It's big. Yeah. It's kind of like this big. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it actually won um, worlds, or sorry, it came it came second in the world's best sleep mask competition in two thousand and sixteen or two thousand seventeen. I can't remember now, but uh, hasn't changed since then. So yeah, cool. um, good for you guys. Yeah, it's one hundred percent pure silk as well, and silk actually is really good for retaining moisture in your skin. So they've done studies that show that if you sleep on a silk pillowcase. Um, your visible signs of wrinkles uh, are much lower than if you sleep on, say, a cotton um, pillow. So, so if you imagine like people who maybe sleep on their side or on their their front, they're squishing their skin into that fabric, right, of whatever the fabric is on their pillow slip. And if it's silk, well, because silk retains moisture, your skin, which is your body's lar- largest organ, is going to retain that moisture and you're going to wake up feeling nice and looking nice whereas if you're putting your face or your skin onto cotton and you're constantly rubbing up against that for like eight hours of the night that's going to create visible signs of of uh of aging that's going to do mm. your skin you know a little bit of damage not as much damage if you go out in the australian sunshine in the middle of december and don't put a hat on and cover yourself obviously but um, yeah. some damage nonetheless um I'm curious, and again, apologies if you did say this when my audio wasn't working. But as an as a shift worker, do you do they sometimes have you do a seven to three thirty shift, and then they'll start you again on a nine to seven shift? Are they allowed to do that? Like, or do they, or do they have you do a um, one thirty to ten shift, and then they'll have you come in again at seven a.m. Like, and then what happens if there's just a need for you to stay back late? Or a need for you to start early, because I'm sure that's yes, the stuff. Yes, all of those. Over. It's constantly moving beast, I would imagine. Mm. Yep. Yes, to all of those. 
Um, we often do the classic late early shift, which we do uh, you finish at 10 o'clock at night and you start again at 7, which I am a big believer that uh, seven to nine hours sleep is what we want and it's actually physically impossible to get that during that shift. So that can be an incredibly challenging 24 hours for probably any nurse watching this. Late early is uh, uh, no good. <laughs> so doing things like wearing the swannies, keeping to a routine and probably having a shorter wind down period when you get home is incredibly important um, and really making sure that you're not you know, having maybe a big pizza for dinner or a big bowl of pasta because you just feel so bloated and you've only got a short period of time to sleep before you got to get up again. So, um, yeah, so that could, that can be difficult. Um, from a night shift, uh, switching to back to a day shift. So we may finish at seven o'clock in the morning and then we start again at five o'clock in the afternoon. So some nurses, they request that shift because they think it um, gets them back to normal quicker than uh, if they were to have, you know, maybe a couple of days off and then come back to a day shift. So everyone's got their own preference to what they like to do. But, yes, um, to answer your question, they the short turnover between shifts is, um, yeah, it's very, very common and we – to do overtime and things like that, particularly in the um, COVID setting that we're in is very common as well, which um, back when I first started nursing, I thought, oh, overtime, yeah, people are going to think that I'm this amazing nurse that I've worked overtime and I don't need to sleep and I don't need to eat and, you know, sort of I wear this hero badge because I've done overtime, but I've totally um, changed my view on it and it's sleep is so much more important than doing overtime and I know that you get you get the financial reward and you know if you need to help out I've, I've definitely I've done overtime not too long ago because we needed it um, and we were desperate but if you if you do have a choice and you don't have to do it I'd recommend to um just to go home and have a nice sleep and come back for your next shift you know if you've got to stay a couple of hours um this is the other compromise you could do that um, look, I can't do a full overtime. I, I can't do a double shift, for example, but maybe I'll stay for four hours. Um, that can be a, a nice balance. Um, and my boss, she often says that um, because we can just help relieve some breaks for four hours and then I can go home. So that, that could be a nice mm -hmm. alternative for you. For someone who's not a shift worker, for someone who maybe works sometimes from home, uh, and they really have to get something done and so they wait for the kids to go to sleep or they wait for the day to, to finish and then, you know, ordinarily maybe they're asleep by 10, 10.30 at night but on this occasion they've decided that they're going to take advantage of the quiet and they're going to push through until midnight, 12.30, 1 in the morning. Maybe they'll stay up a few hours later than they ordinarily would. What... Um, would you suggest for that person in terms of should they still wake up at the same time as they would if they went to sleep at 10? So, for example, if they sleep from 10 until 6.30 and they decided this night they're not going to go to sleep until 1 o'clock, should they still wake up at 6.30 or should they push through until 9.30 if they have that luxury, of course, of mm. not having to what a nice luxury this person has, yeah. Um, yeah. Seven to nine hours is what your body wants. This is when um, you, you can re restore and sort of reinvigor um, natural body processes. So I would be pushing through and aiming for seven to nine hours. Okay, got it. Okay, so... Uh, for anyone who would like to learn more, the other shift on Facebook and, and the other shift uh, dot com is where you should head. Uh, Emma, thank you so much for giving us your words of wisdom today. Um, we so appreciate you. And thank you so much for those who ask questions on Facebook and YouTube on the live recording of this. There'll be many more people who will watch a replay of this. Uh, so when you, if you are one of those people who are watching a replay and you do have a particular question, go ahead and type the question in and we'll make sure that we get your question uh, answered. But for those of you who are live and ask questions, thank you so much for being here. There were some great questions. Uh, apologies if my audio not working back 
uh, the half an hour or so ago compromised the quality of this particular thing. But I think we got through. Emma, I'm sure you were a professional and oh, we're, we're. I don't know. I, I think I started there for a little bit, but hopefully everyone. You're educating around. people. You're educating people along the way. I'm going to watch the replay so I can pick up all the stuff that I missed out on. Um, is there any final, uh, you know, advice or, or you know something to round it off to people? who are night shift workers or who have up and down sleep patterns as to, you know, as to how they might live a better life while navigating those challenges? I think my big takeaways is find a routine for yourself that works. If you've got kids, find a routine that works for you. Focus on the light and really start to think about what light source you're giving to yourself at particular times during your shift. Make time for people that you love. If you want to see your friends, you want to see your family, make time for them. Get some time in the sun. Again, I don't know what that looks like for you, but take your dog and give them a little treat outside in the sun. Um, Remember that your digestive system slows overnight. This was a bit probably one of the biggest takeaways for me. So really concentrate on what you're putting in your mouth when the sun is down. Your body doesn't need too much during this time, so really focus on what you're putting in your mouth and how your body responds to that. If it causes bloating, try something else. Um, Life as a shift worker, it's different to the non-traditional life, but it's definitely one that is incredibly rewarding. It has its definite positive advantages and you can live a really healthy, happy life. So if if you need anything, um, and you need uh, some personal advice, I'm really happy if you want to send me an email over at The Other Shift. Um, my husband, Daniel, and I, we read every single one and we try to give uh, some um, targeted, unique advice for you. So, um, yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for watching this. Um, uh, James, I don't know if you want to talk about the little giveaway related to this. Oh, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, uh, so. Um, go, you go ahead. Yeah, so I've as a, this is for the nurses watching, or if you know a nurse in your life, um, we I've created a new nurse survival kit. Um, so anyone who's going through their nursing um, studies, so in the in the three year nursing degree or the four year nursing degree in America, um, and during your graduate year, I know that it can be a really tough, challenging anxious time, um, and I wanted to help you out with that. So I've created a little, um, PDF book that's about 50 pages or so. Um, it's not all reading, don't worry. Some of it is uh, some templates and things that you can use. And I'd love to give some away. So we're giving away 20 copies. Um, so 10 of those who participate uh, in the promo and then for the 10 people or each of you tag someone and they'll also be given um, a copy of our new nurse survival kit. You just have to like Swan Week Sleep and come over to our Facebook page and like us as well. Yeah, great. And we'll, I'll make sure that we, um, in the replay version of this, we we pin that up to the top as well, okay, so um, it's not buried down and buried down in the comments. Thank you for uh, for for mentioning that. Um, wonderful. Well, Emma, thank you so much. So thank you so much for being a supporter of Swannies and thank you for much, so much for um, sharing your expertise with us uh, on today's show. Of course. Thank you and, very much uh, for having me on. Yeah. Thank you for what you do. We'll talk thank soon. Thank you. Talk soon. Thanks, James. <laughs>